What is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another vlog on the Weston Smith channel. Today we're starting things off a little different. I'm over here in Flower Mound at Bed Bath & Beyond. A little bit different, right? Yeah, so <laughs> for Christmas I grabbed Devin and I this new espresso machine. We're gonna get into some uh, cappuccino making skills. We're gonna try and make some, oh, anyways, coffee, coffee. And after doing a lot of research we have found a released espresso machine that we would like a little bit more. And so I'm going to go ahead and trade this bad boy in. Stick around till the end of the episode. I'm going to try and pull my first few espresso shots and see if I can even dial it in because it looks kind of challenging. But I am pretty pumped to go grab this sucker, show it to you guys. And then we're going to do some bank fishing. I'm normally not on this side of town. And so I was thinking let's hit some ponds while we were out here. I got some rods on deck. I got some gear. We're going to see if we can't go and catch some fish uh, the day after Christmas. So hope you guys had a fantastic holiday. Let's run in here, see if they have this machine. There's literally like nobody in DFW that had this specific one in stock. So I'm thrilled to be able to showcase this for you guys at the end of today's video. Um, I won't bore you with any more coffee talk. We'll get straight to the fish in here in just a second. Oh, let's go and exchange this before I break it. You want to talk about an upgrade, boys? Look at this thing right here. Oh, oh my gosh. I mean, it's time to make some cappuccinos before we go fishing. I'm telling you. I'm gonna screw up so much coffee later today, it's not even funny. All right, Fish Brain app, show me the juice. What do we have around here? Okay, how many catches over here? I see a catfish, I see some bass. All right, what else is around here? Ooh, that one's got some catches. Dang, that one's got a lot of catches. That's literally right down the street too. 116 catches here, wonder if there's anything big. Ooh, Dink City. Is there any big ones in this place? Okay, so I'm seeing no big fish here. Maybe we'll look around. That's like a two plus pounder. So that one has potential. 69 catches at this one. Bunch of little guys. Ooh, okay, there we go. That's maybe a two and a half. Oh, this one's got some chunky ones. Yep, we're going here. How far is that? Okay, not very far at all. Let me get on Google Maps and I'm gonna map to this one right here. This little six minute drive. Starting route to Let's go. proceed to the route. Okay, I see why the big fish are here. No trespassing, private property. It's a golf course. It would be a golf course. But look at the water. Can I just park my car right here? Definitely probably gonna get in trouble. Let me pull up here. Oh, stalled. It's been a minute. How to drive a stick with Weston Smith. Okay, let's go. Oh, I'm in third gear. That's the problem. See, sometimes you see the water and you get a little Car. flustered. You will need to watch. No copyright. Well, this ain't gonna fly. Gated. This is where I make my U-turn. I could just park right here. Here's the spot. And right, now I'm off the road. Okay, that's much better. There we go. How about that for a parking spot? We are at the top secret location. Somewhere in Flower Mound at a golf course near Bed Bath & Beyond. I'm walking over with two rigs here. I got a swim bait, saucy swimmer with an underspin. Uh, that will work in clear or stained water with that flash. And then I got a, uh, a Ned rig. So we'll see. Oh, it is stained too. All right, what do we got here? First cast. Yeah, there's not the best visibility here today. Let me tell you what, tough to cast, but we'll manage. I'm just going to uh, fan cast this area right here. I'm going to work it a little bit slower today. Instead of just like casting and swimming it right off the bat, I'm kind of letting it fall towards the bottom and kind of slow rolling the swim bait. Good way to get those wintertime hits. Also, setting the hook is kind of awkward too. I cast it a few times over there to the right, and then I'm kind of like reeling it back in like this with the line over to the right. So if I were to get one, I'd have like a backhanded hook set straight into the tree there, probably snap the rod. I think there's actually uh, some other folks hitting the bank though too here. I'm really not getting too much grass on here. Let me just drop it down and see if I can get a hit on the finesse. I got a little Ned Rigged Crawl. This is straight out of the last Mystery Tackle Box video I just filmed. But y'all can try Mystery Tackle Box for your first time for 10 bucks with my link in the description. Get a shipment of new baits every month. Okay, hold on. Yeah, load it up. It is way too nice of a day to try and finesse a bite out of a spot where I can barely even walk. So let's go ahead and try and find another pond with more bank access. Uh, there was also a couple kids fishing this one, so I don't want to intrude on their space and see if we can't get on some fish at another location. Uh, let's do some more Google Maps digging. There we go. This one actually looks like a pretty popular spot at a park close by. And there's probably like three, four, five, six, so there's like six people fishing at this spot right now. So chances are high we can catch a fish at this one, but it seems like it's a little pressured. Well, Ned Rig ain't getting it either. I got an idea. I got an idea and the idea is called clickbait. 
all these places seem to be pretty stained so far. So I kind of want to leave that uh, saucy swimmer tied on there because that's pretty versatile. I'll be using that a lot in the next couple days fishing. But this guy right here that I just tied on for the MTB video, I will untie. And now I can rig up this clickbait and just walk the pond with one rod is what I'm thinking. So I'm not running into trees and stuff carrying two rods. What else we got in here? I haven't thrown the black and blue much. Yeah, let's roll with the black and blue. I'm gonna put a trailer on this guy, feed it up there onto the double plastic keeper. Shouldn't be moving, look at that right there. Got the darker color for the stained water with the flash of the blade and that kick of the tail now. We have almost walked around this whole place. We're gonna go somewhere else. Pond number three. I think I'm gonna break out another tried and true wintertime classic jerk bait. See how it fares in this one. I don't know if there's any fish in these ponds. I wish I had some clarity. I'm gonna try and target a clear water spot next. Quick pit stop, gotta grab some grub. I don't know if you guys want any more information on this, but the last like five days, I've been trying to consume about 6,000 calories a day. I've been trying to eat something every two hours, just to consume a little bit of ramen noodles and tuna has been my go-to, and then set another timer on my Apple Watch for a two hour time period, and uh, in hopes to bulk up a little bit this winter. I'm starting right at or just above 150 pounds, weighed in at 154 yesterday morning, and I'm trying to hit a target weight of like 165 or something like that, five foot seven. Anyways, I gotta grab a bowl from in here, at least eat half of it before we start fishing. That way I, really it's about timing for me for sure. I can't go more than like three hours without food or I'm just gonna be losing this weight with the metabolism I got, so. Today's video's got a little bit more than fishing. Trying to bulk up, trying to get on the coffee, and trying to catch a fish before sunset, which is in one hour, so let's make it happen. Ooh. Extra white rice, pinto beans, chicken, hot salsa, corn, sour cream. Let's go. Okay. Food is in the system. We'll just take the whole deal. I think I'm going to try a spot further down where there's not as much wind with this Ned rig. There we go. What might be back here? Still got time to pull something together here. There might be a deep pocket that these fish are hanging out in on this side of the pond. And if so, I'm gonna try and find them. I'm gonna fan cast here with the Ned Rig. See if I can't grab one before dark. A little finesse crawl. This is the definition of how to get bites in the winter. It kind of changes from how many can you catch in one day in the winter time to uh, can I get a bite? Figure out where they are, figure out what they want. And if you can knock those things out, you can get on some serious numbers in winter time because a lot of times they're schooled up in a certain area. And once you're locked on, you can usually find a bunch of them. Just a small mushroom head jig. It would be nice if I had brought some more plastics because I could throw some rattling heads or the rattling chunks. And I'd have a little bit of sound with some beads inside of the plastic to go with the scent and the looks. Also, I'd probably throw something like the black flash color. That way it stands out a little bit more. I probably got about 20 more minutes. So let's see if we can put something together here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, they ain't hitting. Let's go make some espresso. How's it going? Oh, what's Good. Up? Y'all fishing? Take some flick baits. I think I got a couple. Awesome. Thank you. Good running into y'all. Till next time. See ya. Okay, Zeke. Yo. Now is the part of the vlog we're most excited about. Let's go. But before we get to it, I need to finish this Chipotle. That was delicious. Let's go ahead and unbox this thing, man. This is Devin and I's Christmas gift to ourselves. We are so thrilled about this. Say what? <laughs> Woo! So sick. I'm planning on getting full tilt into this espresso making process, y'all. Although I don't know that much now. Just be ready in these future videos when you see some sick coffee making right before we go hit the ponds. Quick start guide. The Porta filter. Sick. Okay, that's actually heavier than I thought. We had looked at some different models too, by the way, and we were contemplating. There's of course all of the like two to three or four hundred dollar options, and then it kind of steps up to models similar to this guy right here with more features. Some of the ones in this price category now have like the built-in grinder and just more adjustability that we'll talk about as we go through this. Stranger. Maybe this is not smart. Okay. Comes with a milk jug. Toss under there, froth your milk for your cappuccinos and such. Bean hopper. Check it out. All right guys, so it was about that point last night as I was unboxing the whole deal that I realized black looked a little cheap on this machine and we opted to return it 
go hunting for a stainless model and we're actually happy we did the thing. It looks absolutely stellar. So it's the next day. Devin and I are setting this thing up for the first time. I got out the instruction manual and right now I'm currently, uh, I just got done soaking the water filter in cold water for five minutes. They say to do that. I rinsed out the water tank. So this thing is good to go. We're going to fill this thing up, turn it on for the first time. It's supposed to do like an initial cycle and then we're going to start trying to make some espressos. Uh, this sounds like it's a pretty complex process when you're doing a lot of the stuff manually like this machine offers. So we're just going to do things different today. Walk you through some of this and see if we can't make some coffee. Okay. So that's rinsed and everything. It looks like you just drop it down in here and tighten it up, but I'm not sure that looks right. So I put in a fair amount of water. A first use cycle must be completed before the initial use of the machine. The first use cycle rinses the machine and primes the heating system. All right, here it goes. Press the one cup button. Flush in progress. Yeah, it rinses a few times. All right, chill. I think we're about ready to experiment with our first espresso shot. So I've got some, I've got my cheat sheet right here. I don't have a scale that weighs grams, but it weighs ounces. So I just kind of asked Siri, what were some conversions from grams to ounces? 18 grams is how much coffee I need. Somewhere between like 17 and 21 grams is like a standard double shot. What we're trying to accomplish is a 36 gram yield based on a lot of the pros I've been watching, right? Uh, within like a 25 to 35 second range. If we get the 36 gram yield in like 10 or 15 seconds, that means there's too much flow and I have messed up my tamp most likely. And if it takes longer than 30 seconds, it's kind of the same thing. I've either packed it too light or I've packed it too thick, a combination of the tamp and then also the coarseness of our grind. So I've just got it in a middle of the roads grind setting. This thing has a one through 30 grind setting or size. And so I've got it on 15. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weigh these beans I'm going to toss them in the hopper and then we're going to go ahead and grind them up into the portafilter which has been heated if it stays on here after the machine has been turned on for 10 to 15 minutes it heats it up which is supposed to affect the taste of your shot. The f is this thing low on batteries? Again it doesn't read gram so I'm just going off the cuff here. So I'm zeroing it out with the portafilter on there. Looks like a lot of beans to me but there we go 0 0.6 and 0 0.63 is supposed to be 18 grams so this should be appropriate. So let's see. Okay, so there we go. First time grinding up the goods. Give that a couple taps, they say. One of the main variables in your espresso seems to be your tamp. You wanna keep a consistent amount of pressure every time you do this. I've never done it before, so we're just gonna go ahead. We want this, uh, where it goes from silver to black, we want that to just line up perfectly with the rim on this guy here. We're gonna go ahead and get a different aftermarket tamper here shortly, but let's apply a little pressure. So I have no idea if that's proper. I felt like I didn't even press it that much and it looks a little uneven. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna apply a little bit more. I'll tell you what, it might not be perfect, but it looks pretty good. Yeah, see there's where you can see my imperfection right there. That might be bad. That might be detrimental to our espresso shot. But once again, we're gonna grab an aftermarket one off of Amazon here pretty quickly. I think I'm ready to toss this bad boy on here. For all my avid coffee drinkers over here that are making these things already, uh, let me know exactly what else I'm missing. So I'm going to zero out the scale and I'm gonna stop it when it gets to 1.2 ounces. It looks like it's flowing pretty fast. So I probably messed a little something up. 1.1, 1 1.2. 1 it looks like a hefty espresso shot. Look, you can see the crema start to build up. The first ever espresso to come out of the machine. I'm sure if I were to taste this right now, I would say it's good because I don't have a whole lot to compare it to. All right, let's taste the first espresso. Even though, even though they say if you don't get it right, you might as well not even taste it because it's just going to be bad. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think it is a little, a little watery. What does that mean? I under extracted or something like that? Let me, let me review the handbook here. All right, let's try this again. There we go. Whoa, definitely stacked her up. Oh yeah, there's more beans this time. Definitely an inconsistent tamp, by the way, y'all. Round two now. There's a lot of automated ways that you can make an espresso with this machine, but we're kind of trying to go the manual route. And so once you get it programmed to the amount of coffee, or your dose that you're gonna be using each time, it gets much easier, more simplistic. Nine, 10, 11, and 31 seconds. I actually think that this might be a good espresso right here. Look at that, man. Makes you feel like a professional, even though it's just at home and it might be garbage. I don't know, give it a little sippy sip. Not as watery as the first one. That's really all I can say. I can't tell you too much about the flavor and the notes because it's getting into things out here, but this is delicious. We'll be catching more fish than ever hyped up off this Mountain Dew. Devin's about to tell y'all how delicious this is. It's not bad. <laughs> it gets the A-OK. -okay. I don't know we got some baristas in the house, man. But we're gonna get this thing dialed in. I hope you enjoyed this fishing, kind of non-fishing episode showcasing our newest Christmas gift to ourselves, the one and only Breville Barista Pro. Things ranted and raved about. We could barely find one in the whole DFW Metroplex, let alone in the proper color. Any questions you guys have, drop them down below. 
below. Surely if we can't answer them at this very point in time, we'll be able to answer them very soon. But we definitely gotta grab a couple more accessories. I think we're gonna have a good old time with this thing. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Go ahead and drop a like and subscribe and we'll see y'all on the next one.